One thing is guaranteed, there will be no summer vacation or break for the president of city council in Philadelphia. The pressures are enormous, and he's here today to talk about the school's crisis and everything else that's going on in the fifth largest city in America, right here on Voice of Reason. Good, every, good evening, everyone. I'm Larry Kane. It, it's really uh, quite a story about the role of a city council president and the dramas that are going on in Philadelphia right now. And so for the second time in several months, we have him on the air, a conversation with the president. And when I said that, some people thought it was the Washington president, but we have, we have a more important one potently here in Philadelphia because there's so much going on right now. Daryl Clark, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. You have a brand new council with a lot of new members. You have uh, a mayor uh, that's uh, somewhat lame duck, although he doesn't believe that. You have a school reform commission that is slashing and slashing and slashing. And right now, as we speak, you are desperately trying to get... Can we start this again? One thing we can pretty well guarantee you for this summer, there will be no summer break or vacation. The city council may be on recess, but watch out for the president of Philadelphia City Council. He's got so much troubles facing him right now, it's hard to believe he'll have a spare moment. We'll talk to him about those issues that affect so many of you right now. Welcome to Voice of Reason, everyone. I'm Larry Kane, and our guest tonight, for the second time in several months, because so much is going on, Daryl Clark, the president of Philadelphia City Council. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. This school's crisis was the subject of our program a week ago, and it seems to me that someone in government should have the power or the influence to go to Harrisburg and get the money. Right now, the latest story is a $2 uh, tax per pack of cigarettes. Uh, so if it's a 10, 10 pack, uh, 10 cigarette pack, it's a carton, it's uh, $20 more. Yes. Uh, will that be enough to fund the schools? Based on the request from the city of Philadelphia, that will be more than adequate. Um, this whole tiered approach to getting funding that will allow them to continue at the existing level, which is frankly speaking not at the level that we'd all like to see. Uh, essentially is $120 million from personnel slash operations, $120 million from the state, and there's an ass of $60 million from the city. Uh, if we enact a local tax on cigarettes, we will surpass the $60 million level. Now here's a key question. Let's say you get the money. Let's say the governor walks in with some uh, something. It's an election year next year. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say something happens that, uh, that frees up money. I mean, we had a, a report last week that one of the schools, Gerard uh, uh, Musical Academy, Gerard Academy Music Program is actually ra trying to raise a thousand dollars per parents, right. which would get them over their budget needs. Yeah. Uh, and let's say the schools are solvent again. What's to prevent the future from happening, where there are no bid contracts, where there are there's a lot of bu bureaucracy going on under the Ackerman regime and the regimes before that, and the new one is just barely a couple of months old. Right. What can you do to stop that? Well, first let me say that I feel very comfortable with the uh, new director, uh, Dr. Height. Um, I've had several conversations with him. Uh, it's clear that he's committed because uh, he left a place where he was quite comfortable and came to the city of Philadelphia. Uh, his ability to interact with elected officials and more importantly, community people has impressed me considerably. Um, talking about a game plan, understanding that you have to work within your needs uh, to maximize opportunities for leverage with uh, universities and community participation has been very helpful to get me in, term, in terms of his ability to do his job, to get me at a point where I feel comfortable. Uh, the reality is, though, as he moves ahead, it's going to be extremely challenging, uh, but I think he deserves and should get the full support of us on the elected side, and I think that his willingness to listen and to allow input 
uh, from elected officials and communities has shown me that it would clearly be a participatory type of government uh, structure in the new school district. Well, Dr. Hyde notwithstanding, he gets a pass for a little bit here. There's no question about it because he's new. Yeah. Why doesn't the Philadelphia City Council have a representative on the School Reform Commission, which has been around, what, 12 years? Correct. And has had a record of nothing but failure. Okay? Yeah. I mean, failure. Yeah. Failure in controlling its budget, failure in providing the proper education. And I'm not talking about Dr. Height, because mm -hmm. he's new, although he just, they decided last week not to send a representative to this program, mm -hmm. which disappointed me. You know, you think we want to hear I'll, what they I'll, have to I'll, say. I'll talk to them about that. Well, it's okay. <laughs> and, you know, it's not your role. But, but here, here's the key. Why, doesn't, why, don't, why can't a body that's so powerful as city council with 17 members be, have a member on right. the school reform commission? Well, as you know, the state took over the school district um, a few years ago um, during the tenure of then Mayor Street. Uh, initially, the original proposal was the state was going to have all uh, five members of the School Reform Commission. The mayor at the time negotiated an agreement that allowed the city to have two. But those two individuals are the mayoral appointees. Uh, we have no confirmation. So it is somewhat challenging and somewhat frustrating to council members when on an annual basis it's our responsibility to authorize the tax but not have li input into the operations of the school. Uh, I would like to see a little more participation in terms of our ability to influence the direction. Um, would I like to see council have a, a seat on that board? Probably so. Uh, there's going to be conversations um, I think in a week or so about having the the possibility of an elected school board. I'm not sure that that's the direction, uh, but until we have an opportunity to have a member on the board or an elected school board, I think the willingness and the ability of Dr. Height and the SRC to have direct conversations with not only the City Council of Philadelphia, but members of the General Assembly uh, will put us in a position to move our, ourselves forward as it relates to the educational opportunity I, for I young know, people. I know you're not a gambling man, but right. if you were to look at the odds right now of uh, getting the money necessary, either by this cigarette tax or somebody coming in here at the last minute, right. would you think that the budget will be covered? Well, I, I have to be an optimist given my position, because if I, if I come in with this level of pessimism, then it's probably not going to happen. So the reality is, even if we get what we're asking for, there still needs to be additional infusion of rev resources, uh, revenue. It depends on the approach. But we cannot have a situation in September where the schools are not allowed to function at any level because I genuinely believe that if we don't come up with the $300 million that those schools will essentially be a place where you'll cut the lights on, the employees come in, and children don't learn. And, and at that point, what's the point? So I don't think that there's an alternative to not putting some additional resources at this time. But understanding, even if we do that, we have to make improvements. Um, the $300 million will essentially allow us to maintain maintain the status quo. That's not sufficient. We have to move forward and come up with a game plan for truly creating an educational experience that's going to move not only our young people but our city forward. Don't you think a lot of kids have been, uh, over the years, have been cheated somewhat? I'm talking about over the last 45 right. years. I do. And, but the reality is when you look at the school district, Larry, you actually have some success stories. Um, you and I talked earlier about a couple of the schools and they're, they're quite promising. So. Right. There's a blueprint for an educational experience that's uh, a positive outcome. And I think that we need to adopt that blueprint, be it charterization of public schools or be it um, the, um, to some degree, the limitation on charter schools and allowing that model to be in the public schools. But at the end of the day, uh, there is a path to getting the, the appropriate educational opportunity for young people, and we have to adopt that. We talk about all of the measures, the, the taxes, AVI, and all the other things that we'll be talking about today, but at the end of the day, unless the population in the city of Philadelphia is adequately educated, we're not going to be in a position to be the city that we truly can be. You know, it's kind of interesting when you look at uh, AVI taxes, which we'll get to in a moment, but you look at the current educational crisis, which is really a crisis. Right. I mean, it's a crisis. It's a crisis of people and aspirations. When you look at that, there's probably nothing more important outside of public safety in a city like Philadelphia. Right. And, uh, and public safety has a link to education. Mm -hmm. You don't hear from the, all these potential mayoral candidates. I mean, you don't, what, are they, what are they thinking about this? They're two years away from, uh, from a mayoral primary, uh, which is going to change the city, whoever's the mayor, it always mm -hmm. changes. Mm -hmm. Where are they? 
I mean, some of them are members of your own council. Yeah, well, I don't think that anybody's officially announced. Um, so until that point in time. But I, I mean, even as council members, yeah. even as Tom Knox is a businessman, right. uh, Councilman Kenny and Green and, and others, uh, you don't hear a lot of talk about education. Right. Well, you, you'll understand if I dodge that particular <laughs> specific question. Yeah. But I think most importantly, regardless of whatever your position is currently in government, uh, that you need to lay out a game plan uh, as City Council of Philadelphia. Uh, we're going to be laying out a game plan to the level that we can because, again, we don't have a seat on the board. Again, we have no ability to influence the outcome of educational opportunities. But we're going to have a voice in this, and I expect us to be laying out some clear and concise game plans for how we improve our public education. The one thing, Larry, i got to say, when there was an announcement of more than 30 schools it woke us up because we understood Close. we have to get engaged, yes. And, and we got engaged in a very meaningful letter. And I, and I said publicly in a community meeting that I apologize because I wasn't engaged in the schools in my district the way I should have been because I took the approach that I don't have a seat on the board. We have no ability to influence the discussion and the operations of the school district. The state controlled it. The mayor had an appointment. All we did is authorize attack. I wasn't engaged at the level that I should have been. Since that closure program came forward, I'm fully engaged, and I think all members of council are. And I'll see, I think you'll see a difference in terms of the participation level. Rare political admission. Um, Rare. Uh, <laughs> You know, something that's music to your ears, City yeah. Council, uh, City Controller just released another report mm -hmm. about the traffic camps mm -hmm. and the crime camps. They're not working well. Yeah. Uh, and you went down to Baltimore. Yes. And you recommended. And then after we talked to you, uh, I happened to be in Boston the day of the, sh of the uh, bombings there. Mm -hmm. After we talked to you, we saw the value of private cameras that were not necessarily merged with public cameras. And now that you've seen what happened in Boston and you look at the potential, as you learned from Baltimore, which has a much more successful camera program than we do, yes. Aren't are you thinking about a massive effort to incorporate all the cameras that we have in Philadelphia as any uh, crime fighting techniques? Yeah, I think that you know we have clearly looked at a, a model in Baltimore. We actually uh, asked the individuals who adopted the model in Baltimore to come met with us, talked to council members. I understand he met with the administration. Uh, we are waiting a response. It is clear real-time camera coverage uh, can, in fact, uh, stop crime, um, prevent crime. Uh, I'd like to see a more aggressive approach. The city controller released a report. He said there's now currently only 32 percent of the cameras that are operable. The administration says there's 80. Uh, we have to get to the bottom of that. And once we get a clear and accurate sense of what the realities are as it relates to camera coverage, then we need to move forward with a very aggressive plan. Now, this last week there was a remarkable uh, candid uh, call by the police commissioner, mm. who's generally well regarded asking for an independent investigation with federal funds of the uh, shootings of people by police, many mm -hmm. of them probably justified, who mm -hmm. knows. Mm -hmm. uh, are you concerned about that? Well, I, I'm glad that uh, Commissioner Ramsey is willing to look um, in his inward as it relates to the operations of his department. He's done that consistently when there's a cop that has an allegation. He's fully investigated that, and where appropriate, he's taken action. Uh, I'm comfortable with the fact that proactively, as he said, he's asking the Justice Department to look at operations as it relates to um, shootings by police officers. So I, I feel good about Ramsey's approach to But he's also made the point that there is a very dangerous situation out there in some areas of the city, oh. and that his officers have to deal with it well, as they see fit. I can tell you, Larry, that's a job that I wouldn't want to have. And, and I commend uh, the police officers who are willing to go out in some very challenging neighborhoods or not so challenging neighborhoods because we've had crimes across the city. Um, a lot of these police officers are outgunned, uh, which is why we were trying to deal with the gun issue. And unfortunately, Senator Toomey and Senator Manchin's uh, proposal was shot down by the Senate. But I'd like to see us continue to be supportive of the commissioner, continue to be supportive of any anti-crime initiatives in the city of Philadelphia. Recently, an artist that we had on this program uh, tried, uh, got two-thirds of the way through to uh, chalk out the lines of uh, almost uh, 10, 12,000 people on JFK, and then it rained. Mm, yeah. And I guess they're going to do it again. Yeah. There's a lot of support for that. Do you think the people of the city are ready for, even though the legislation may be struck down by the courts, you think it's worthwhile making a statement by uh, creating your own legislation? 
Well, you know, we did that. Uh, we went to all the way to the Supreme Court. Uh, we're not successful. We still have a couple of bills pending. Uh, we're awaiting uh, some action by the uh, district attorney's office to get a ruling by the Supreme Court. But we can't wait for that. Um, there are currently a number of measures being taken to reduce homicides. Unfortunately, homicides are down uh, quite aggressively in the city of Philadelphia, keeping our fingers crossed that that continues. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's still too many shootings, um, not only obviously by police, but police only shoot because some person has a weapon, more than likely illegally. We have to get the guns out of the hands of these individuals. That and shouldn't and have generally, uh, unless you're there, you have to give the benefit of the doubt to the law enforcement officer right. in most cases, don't oh, you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the reality is that there are a lot of people with a lot of guns, and most of them are illegal. So you have to be in a position to respond when you're approached by such a situation. Daryl Clark will get an update on his plan for advertising on city properties as a way to close the budget gaps and take a look at the uh, controversial new tax assessment program right after this. If you live in Philadelphia, you know the words A-V-I. It's not the call letters of a television station. It's uh, a new way to assess taxes. Some people are thrilled with it. Others are so angry. Uh, and you, you'd like to see it scrapped, right, for the most part? No, no. I, I think we need to move forward. Uh, we're too far into this process. The question is, uh, you need to do it fairly and you need to do it accurately. Um, there is several... What does A-V-I stand for? Well, it's an actual value initiative, and I do believe that property should be valued at their actual value. Uh, the challenge.